All right, we're back for the exciting rest of the story of how to use both your declarative and procedural systems to help you learn better. Let's look at an example. Say you're learning a new language. When you first begin your studies, you might use flashcards and, and different kinds of rules of grammar to help you understand what you're learning. As you do this, you're learning consciously through that declarative system. Incidentally, memory tricks such as those that we have taught earlier work by depositing those sets of links through the declarative system. But you may notice something a little strange. As you study a foreign language, you can remember the words, you can form correct sentences, but you do this very slowly, and it's really hard. You can't think and speak quickly and naturally like a native speaker can. In fact, when you start trying to converse with a native speaker, sometimes the words you thought you knew don't come out at all. This is because when you're learning a foreign language, your first sets of links are deposited mostly through that declarative system. These links are quicker to put into place than links that are laid by the procedural system. But declarative links, they're slower to use. Jeg, um, har, det a bear, bra. If you listen, read, and speak freely in your new language, you slowly begin to strengthen those new links of vocabulary and grammar through the procedural system. Your procedural sets of links grow and strengthen so you speak more fluently and with less effort. You have a goal in mind of what you want to say and you pass that goal on to the black box of the procedural system. Again, and then again, and then again. With plenty of practice, out will come that verbiage that you need in the new language without you even having to think much about what you're saying. Your procedural system helps you learn the patterns of a language and allows you to speak rapidly, but without having to concentrate on how to say what you want to say. The same applies for learning to drive. In the beginning, you used your declarative system to remind yourself to, for example, signal when you are going to turn. But with practice, signaling a turn becomes something you do automatically. In other words, you develop sets of links growing through the habit stream of the procedural system. You can even do things like drive home automatically while thinking about other things because you are drawing from those procedural sets of links in long-term memory to do the routine driving. The declarative system learns through structure, explanations, and step-by-step -step examples. The procedural system, on the other hand, learns through immersion and feeling out the patterns and rules on its own. How does this happen? Mostly through lots and lots of varied interleaved practice. Notice that the declarative and the procedural systems can learn the same information. They just allow you to use that information differently, either slowly and with sometimes difficult thought, or quickly without even thinking about it. Let's talk some more about how you can create strong sets of links using your procedural system. We'll start with something you probably already know, but it's worth repeating because now you can understand why this point is true. Just because you can recite the definition for something does not necessarily mean you understand that concept. Why? It's because you can learn the definition declaratively, but you grow to fully and truly understand that concept only through lots and lots of procedural practice. Let's talk about math. It can often be relatively straightforward to learn math declaratively. Just follow the step-by-step -step procedure you've been taught to solve the problem. But declarative learning is only part of learning math. Let's look at how we can use the procedural system to develop your problem-solving intuition for math and other numerical subjects. 
To do this, we're going to show you how to use a process we call internalization. Here's how you internalize. First, pick an important looking problem where the complete work solution is available. But don't look at that solution. Instead, listen to your internal voice and see if you can solve each step of the problem. At first, do this by hand on paper to prevent yourself from thinking you know how to solve it when you actually don't. Only peek at the solution if you get stuck. You might need to look at the solution repeatedly, but don't be discouraged. Then rework that problem again that day until you can get through the whole problem by pulling the solution from your own mind without peeking at the answer. Practice again here and there over the next few days until you're so capable that you can just look at the problem and know how to solve it. The steps flow as naturally as a song in your mind. You'll be surprised at how much more easily and quickly you can solve that problem as the days go by. What you are doing is developing procedural fluency with the key ideas of the problem. You internalize several different problems in a day. This internalization will help your brain develop an intuition for how to solve various types of problems because you will develop a natural feel for the differences and similarities of the different types. Developing a feel for patterns and being able to rapidly and intuitively solve problems is the forte of the procedural system. Notice that you are not memorizing how to solve the problems. Instead, you are internalizing problems, letting your intuition whisper the next step toward the solution. Internalizing some of the most important problems in the area you are learning create a sort of scaffold in your brain. This scaffold, well, technically it's called a schema, will allow you to more easily learn new related problems. From a practical perspective, your internalized scaffold of key ideas will allow you to more easily see how to solve problems, especially when time matters. People often learn by blocking. That is, they might solve 10 problems of a certain type, and then 10 more problems of another type, and then perhaps 10 more of yet another type. But it's much better, once you've got a feel for certain kinds of problems, to interleave with other kinds of somewhat different problems. Mixing up the types of problems you solve lets your procedural system develop a sense of the different patterns needed to solve related, but somewhat differing problems. You can do interleaving in all sorts of subjects. For example, mix up flashcards of different artistic styles instead of just studying one style in block. When you practice verb conjugation, you should mix up several tenses in the same session. Interleaving different types of problems or concepts will help you learn the differences between them and allow you to pick the right approach intuitively, since it helps strengthen procedural links. To improve a skill, whether it is managing people, being a better negotiator, or becoming a wizard at Excel, both the declarative and procedural systems play a role. Feed your declarative system with new insights and tactics by reading books, taking online courses, such as this one, or in-person courses. Feed your procedural system through plenty of actual practice. Your declarative and procedural systems inform one another as you build your skills. When you study online, you have the freedom to choose when and how to study. But how do you make sure all that freedom doesn't result in all play and no studying? The key to success probably isn't what you think. More on this in our next video. I'm Barb Oakley. And I'm Olaf Shui. Thank you for learning to learn like a pro.